All right, here we go. Welcome back. All right, so today's video, what we want to look at is uh, torque and rotational acceleration. So this is a very common problem. I like to call it the well bucket problem. Somebody will have a cylinder. This one we're going to say is a solid cylinder and they've got a rope or some form of cord wrapped around it and attached to it is a mass M. And usually what this problem wants for us to try and solve for, at least in terms of working the problem out, usually this problem ends up asking you to find tension and acceleration in the system. So let's just start off by, let's ignore let's ignore the cylinder that's up here for a second so we'll ignore this cylinder that's up here and let's focus on this object we're used to this so we've got this falling mass over there so let's see if we can go ahead and kind of work a little bit about that mass so we know that that mass is falling so we know that mass is falling so Let's come over here and let's see if we can't do a free body diagram for it over here on the other side of the page. So we know it's falling. So let's put a little dot here. So we've got an mg. I'm going to use a lowercase m for that object going down. And it's connected by the string. So we're going to call that a tension going up. And we'll go ahead and do something else. We'll go ahead and say that the sum of the forces x on that object is nothing. And we'll say that the sum of the forces y, now we'll have to think to the fact that, hey, this thing is falling down here. So as I write this, I'm going to write my forces just to make it easier. I'm going to write mg minus t is equal to ma now that pretty well addresses that pretty well addresses this guy over here so now we kind of need to turn our attention to this object now you should have already worked on torques before you got here because the reality of it is and this is actually why i've got this random box over here because when you're working this problem, basically what you're doing is you're looking at it like it's still a beam. So this is why you learn first to work with these. And I know you're saying, but hey, Mr. Cole, that's a cylinder. Yeah, I know. We're not looking at it like it's a cylinder. We're looking at it like it's a beam. So we're going to do what's called a rigid body diagram on that object. So let's see if we can't do a rigid body diagram. So in the center where the axis is, we've got a M, G going down. Now that axis is, you've got to have something still like a fulcrum. So that axis, we're also going to say that we've got a normal force going up. And then over here, at 90 degrees to the radius, pulling down, we've got a tension in this rope. So let's go ahead and do something. Let's do some of the forces. A lot of people just skip this step, but I think it's something you still need to see and be able to do. So let's do some of the forces X and some of the forces Y on this guy. So some of the forces X, well, look at the picture. There are none. So that's kind of easy. So that's a zero. Some of the forces Y, well, we've got an N going up minus a capital MG down and minus a T as well. But here's the thing. What's this one equal to? I'm sorry, I'm tapping random buttons. What what is the sum of the forces y for this equal to? Well, you got to be thinking this sum of the forces x and y is referring to the center of mass of this object. And now if you think about it, this object is just spinning on its axis. So in terms of center of mass, it's not going anywhere. So the sum of the forces x and y on that object are both equal to zero. So we're not even going to use, this is not even going to be of use for us, but I still want to make sure you know it's there because sometimes you may actually use it on the problem. So 
So here's what's new. We're going to be doing something that's new here. You should already know what a torque is. A torque is when you have a force at some radius on this rigid body. So my pivot point is going to be in the center, which means the mg and the n, well, nothing much there. They're not going to be doing anything. But this tension is at 90 degrees. So this tension is actually going to be making a torque out here. Uh, other ways of writing torque in like calculus would be like R cross F, but this problem is just algebra. So we're not worried about the R cross F for a cross product. But we can also remember just like everything, just like there's a equation that looks like some of the forces equals MA, there's an equivalent to that in circle world, as I like to call it. Some of your torques is equal to, in this case, I alpha. So what we need to do now is a sum of the torques for this object. So sum of the torques on that object is equal to I alpha. So let's actually look at the torques. What's the only torque on that object? Well, it's just that tension. So the sum of my torques is... T, R, there's my torque, my tension is my force, and the radius of this object is my actual R in terms of doing my torque, and I know that that's equal to uh, I alpha. And actually what's funny is my physics is basically over now in this problem. So, and you may be going, what do you mean my physics is over, Mr. Cole? And I thought, well, your physics is over because that equation and this equation are the only two things we need. But we still need to resolve those and solve for, say, an acceleration. So, I'm going to go back over to here and look at that. So, TR is equal to, well, what is moment of inertia for a cylinder? Well, a cylinder is one half m r square and then we also know from what we've done before with rotational we know that acceleration uh, our tangential is equal to r alpha so that means alpha is the same as a over r and so now we've got this linear acceleration that's going to be we've got it here in both problems now check out what's happening to the R's here. You got R canceling that square and an R canceling your R. So all we're left with is T equals one half capital M A. And so the only thing that's really left to do is to take this guy and substitute it in over here. So let's go make that substitution. Hey, we haven't used blue ink yet. Let's use blue ink. Blue is exciting. So we know that mg minus, now substituting in for t, one half ma is equal to ma. All right, let's combine some things up here. So we know that mg is equal to ma plus one half and remember this is a big m because it's referring to that cylinder and give me a little more page please so mg i know i'm going into way too much trouble if you're watching this video you should be competent enough to do this but i can't help it i'm a little ocd and so m over g divided by m plus one half m is equal to acceleration and there is my answer all right so there is my first video in this series uh if you stick around there's going to be a part two to this video and part two is going to be this guy so it's going to be the atwood's machine you've always seen except how do you work this problem if the pulley actually has mass and a radius in there and we'll even talk about what would you do if there was a, like a frictional torque or something present in there. So anyway, thank you for watching and stick around for next time. Bye.